uh, good. I'm, I'm glad he's on here. I got KL, KL Direct. You're up, my friend. Hey, hey, what's tonight? Good, uh, how you doing, my friend? Oh, uh, not too bad. I was going to stay out of the but when I heard him say there was a no common law and a judge doesn't base hang upon law, that's when I had to... <laughs> he had to chime in. Now, this guy, I'll tell you right now, Ron, this fella here is very, very sharp, very brilliant. And you're going to find that with 99.9% with .9 of my, my listeners and guests, they're, they're cream of the crop. These are the top people uh, that are doing something. They're not just the listeners, but these are the motivators. So go ahead, Kale. Yeah, it's like I said, I was just hearing this man saying something about this. No such thing as common law. I'm trying to keep him laughing. <laughs> I love it when people say that. <laughs> and you got to explain it to him because, you know, Ron's getting older. He may have forgot this. I'm just kidding, Ron. Uh, <laughs> Hello, <laughs> him. What was your name again? Well, my name is my name is Cole Lent. Okay, no, I was talking to. I was calling you, Jack. Oh, you've got to call me too. I've been trying to reach you. I want to have you on the show. You're one of the most brilliant out there, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I. You yeah, I said that there was no common law. I said that the courts are not governed by common law. Which courts? <laughs> the ones that were the, well, the Article Three, the so-called Article Three courts that there aren't anymore. Well, what's the? Do you know what the Ninth Amendment is, or the Article Nine of the Bill of Rights? Do you know what that basically specifically says? I'm I'm going to have to pick up my phone, get off the speakerphone because you're breaking up. Hold on a minute. All right. All right. Now maybe I can hear you without you breaking up. Go ahead. Uh, here, we can hear you a lot better now, Ron. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like I said, uh. It's almost like the Bible and Ninth Amendment. Uh, what, what does an Article 9 of the Bill of Rights mean? Do you have any idea? Have you ever studied it? The Article 9? Well, it has to do with the states, but I'm not totally uh, cognizant of it. No, it just basically says, um, just because we wrote this Constitution does not negate the fact that any law or any rule of law antecedent to the Constitution, Constitution no longer exists. It's the Savings to Suit is Clause. Yeah, okay. That's, okay. Folks really don't even need a Second Amendment. You could rely upon a Ninth Amendment, which basically says that all through history, through mankind, we've always had the right, natural right, to protect and defend ourselves. So the government can't interfere with a right that has been antecedent to the, uh, uh, the drawing of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So all, all we basically need is the Ninth. All the other ones you could throw away. Well, the Tenth is somewhat important. That is um, uh, insane to me, only because it says that the, uh, whatever powers aren't delegated to the federal government are reserved to the state and the people. Now, the tenth, I think, is extreme. Okay, why do you think the tenth is a good thing? Let, let's let you hear your thing. Well, mainly because of the fact that the federal government was essentially a product of the states. The federal government was supposedly given 17 enumerated rights. Uh, which they have done an extremely good job of expanding those rights well beyond the intent of the Founding Fathers. The Tenth Amendment was to give the states essentially the right to uh, do, from, uh, do from their particular state position what they believed was their rights under that Constitution. And they are doing it, some of them are doing it under nullification. Uh, some of them are doing it just by uh, drafting legislation that tells the feds to go to hell. Okay, you know, okay, like I said, I mean, the Ninth Amendment secures and protects man's rights that could have predated the Constitution, They're basically saying anything that's written down or not written down, if man is the custom of the people, it still stands true. Okay, the Tenth, what's the most dangerous word in the Tenth Amendment? You tell me. The power. But if the power isn't with the federal government, it's with the states. That's right. Yeah, and that's the way it's supposed. That was the way it was intended to be. You know what the word power means? Well, yeah, depends on who has the gun. You know what the word power means? Go ahead. And, you know, tell me your definition. Well, I, I wrote a dictionary. That's what I was working on tonight. Then, power means the right to control another. Now, why would I want to give either the federal government power over me? or a state to have power over me, to control me, to have jurisdiction over me. Why would I submit myself to their jurisdiction? Well, that's a very good question. If you believe in, in the uh, absolute fundamental natural rights of the human being, then uh, you wouldn't want to have anybody have power over you. I look at not the fundamental rights of the human being, I look at the, 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 the jurisdiction of man, like a pyramid. 
to be at the top, to be the, the, the keystone, to be, you know, the top. Top of the food chain. Right. And now, now you could say common law would be underneath that, or absolute law would be underneath that, and statutory law. But that's what I'm saying. I will hear a lot of people espousing, oh, we got to get back to the 10th Amendment where the states have the power over the federal government. No. If you want the states to have power over you, um, they could still do some pretty crazy things to you. Well, they are doing pretty crazy things. Right, so I don't want the tenth, I want the ninth, which means that all powers, all rights that are reserved to the people prior to the writing of the Constitution still exist. So that means natural law. That means whatever it took for the caveman to survive, mm -hmm. that's right to still. So what you're saying is that is, that is sufficient enough to render the Second Amendment uh, moot. Moot, totally. Because I've always had that right to defend and protect me, my property, my family, by any means possible. Now, Absolutely. Another case, you can't come by and say, oh, no, 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 that's, that, that, that club you're using is too big. It's a 14-gauge stick, and we only allow uh, uh, 16 gauges. See what I'm saying? Well, yeah, it's absurd. Uh, right. by, by the way, they, there was a kid, somebody or other, that took on uh, Feinstein, uh, with the argument that say, well, under the First Amendment, uh, should we all regulate the books that you should read? And she didn't. She didn't have a very good answer for that. That's why I couldn't. That's because I'm not part of that government. I'm not part of that. I'm not a subject to their rules or authority. So why should I possibly care less? These do or the French government does or the United States government does no bearing on my life. Well, essentially you're saying that you are sovereign. No, I'm basically saying I'm a man. And nobody has the right to power of the power under the 10th Amendment to control me. You okay. bow down to no one, understand? Huh? You bow down to no one. Oh, you better believe I bow down to God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Bob, if you can hold on a second, I'll leave you up. Um, I got one more person there. Uh, that'll work. 